Hi, I'm Helene, here at Hippocrates Health Institute, making yet another sprout salad. Sprout salads are the core of the Hippocrates lifestyle because they're vital. Not only do they contain vitality, but they bring vitality. They restore our energy and they help our cells to be reborn, to proliferate anew. Because our cells are dying and being reborn every single day, all day long, trillions of them in fact. And when we're eating foods that contain the level of vitality that living foods contain, sprouts contain, then we're able to optimize that dying off and being reborn process, which helps to restore vitality in ways that I could have never anticipated when I first started living and breathing the Hippocrates lifestyle. You know, I built the online program that contains the entire lifestyle with my partner, and that has helped thousands of people restore their health, and maintain their vitality. And this culinary program we've designed to help give you more ideas, to create more sustainability and longevity in your commitment and decision in living this diet. Now, every day we're busy, all of us. We've got tons of things to do, lots of things, emails to check, whatever we're doing in our lives, houses to take care of. And I am on a mission to make this lifestyle and this diet in particular fun, fast, and easy. Because if it's not, we're not going to keep living it. It's just going to become arduous and, you know, painful or, you know, negative in some way. So it's got to stay fun. And more important than anything, it has to be delicious because I'm not willing to sacrifice flavor for health. I believe you can have both. And that's one recipe I wanna show you today. This is kind of my go-to on a regular basis. It's super simple, super fast, and super easy. And I think it's delicious. Um, so anyway, where are we gonna start? My goodness gracious. I'm gonna start with the base because the base of the salad is always the ingredient we need most of. And that, in this case, is our sunflower seed sprouts. Sunflower seed sprouts. I know we've introduced these glorious, glorious sprouts before, and I just can't get enough of them. They can't get enough of me because, gosh, you know, some foods, you know, you say, I loved this, I, this food, or I used to love bread, but bread really didn't love me back. It caused a lot of inflammation, caused a lot of problems. But this is one food that I get to love and that loves me back maybe even more than I loved it in the first place. I don't know many things in life that have that level of reciprocity, but sunflower seed sprouts do. Love these guys. They are so, divine really isn't the word I want to use, but it's what's coming to mind. They're so smart. I don't know about you, but I love making smart decisions in my life. And one thing that I can do in my life is find these, grow these, get these in some way, shape or form and put them in my body either in juice or in salads. If you can't find these, find some microgreens. If you can't find these, get some mescaline greens. If you can't find these, get some baby arugula, baby kale, some tender green food that's going to provide you vitality. And deep green is an indication of that source of vitality, that chlorophyll is in that deep green color. But I love sunflower seed sprouts. We happen to eat a lot of them here at the Hippocrates Health Institute as a pillar in our lifestyle. So I'm gonna use that as our base. But again, if you can't find these, find something that is tasty and equivalent, right? You can get box salad pretty much anywhere. I was on a road trip this summer and I was able to find across the country uh, boxed organic green salad. And you know, that was fantastic. And I basically lived on a version of what I'm showing you today, literally on the road. So whether you're traveling, whether you're at home, whether you're visiting family, even if you're camping, you can live this diet. It's absolutely possible. So I love to chop them up. Um, it makes my salad a little bit more manageable to eat. So just chopping these up so that they're, they're bite-sized. So they, they just go nicely onto my fork or my spoon and I can eat them. And, and it's also nice because the dressing coats them more evenly and it just works better for me to chop them. Not everyone does this, but I really like to. So this is gonna go as the base of my salad. And you can just like smell the, the aliveness in it. Mm, such a good smell. Such a beautiful food. They even have like a little bit of natural oil. When you, when you chop them, you can feel it. 
come out. But definitely one tip that you should know about is if you chop it, it will start to turn brown, right? It oxidizes with the oxygen. So now that I've cut it, it has to be eaten. This is not a food that you want to cut and then leave out for a day. You know, it's not like kale or, or another food. Another food that we love at Hippocrates are broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts are famous. If any sprout has gotten press, <laughs> I don't know, any sprout that's gotten more press than the broccoli sprout. And it's mostly because of its cancer-fighting properties, according to Johns Hopkins University. Health-promoting, cancer-fighting, and I could go in and bore you, maybe not bore you, but explain to you the whole reason why. But I can tell you the two components that make this food so exceptional. It's indole-3-carbonyl and sulforaphane. And those two elements take excess estrogen out of our bodies and therefore reduce the probability of cancer cells to grow and then also reduce any cancer cells that are in your body. So it helps to optimize the mechanism that's cancer fighting in our bodies. And broccoli sprouts are considered to be the highest in these two components, but actually there are other sprouts that are equally as high, if not higher than these. But today we're gonna to use a little bit of broccoli sprouts. Now, I can tell you one way to ruin a salad is to add too many of these. <laughs> So I always add them in moderation. Hey, that's my opinion. Some of you may love them, but I tend, I, I find them really strong. I like to grow them as microgreens in my kitchen. These are grown um, on mesh sheets, and so they're a little more concentrated. Um, but imagine each one of these little babies grows into an entire head of broccoli. I mean, that is extraordinary. Right? Imagine that. This has the potentiality of not just one, right? But, but many heads of broccoli and the potentiality for this broccoli to even go and sprout and create more seeds, right? So there's the potentiality in one broccoli sprout is substantially higher. You would have to eat 30 heads of broccoli to equivalent, equ to equate this one little baby sprout. So imagine. You know, it's funny, I used to make these huge salads uh, at Hippocrates and I realized that I just wasn't hungry. This food satisfies at such a deep level. It is, it is shocking to me uh, to know that. You know, as a, as a kid, I struggled with weight problems. Uh, my mother struggled with weight problems and it's just been a, a battle my whole life until I found this diet. And it was as if I just stopped the cravings. They just didn't, they weren't there anymore. That just seemed like a kind of magic to me, but it happened. And it doesn't only happen for me. It happens to the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people who have done this diet for the three-week program here at Hippocrates, which all of you should come to if you haven't already. It's an opportunity of a lifetime to totally reboot your health. The next ingredient we're gonna add in here are lentil sprouts. Lentil sprouts, are of course the beans, the whole beans. And I even like to have these on hand. These are so easy to sprout. You could even put these in a small sprouter and put them in your backpack on a trip. These are very satisfying, especially if I'm hungry in the afternoon, like around four o'clock, need to pick me up. I'm not gonna reach for a cafe latte. I'm gonna reach for some lentil sprouts. And I know that seems like not really the equivalent for many of us, but I'm just saying, if you got a little hankering, these do the trick. So I'm gonna add a little bit, about a tablespoon, and then these guys are a little more rare, but they're just so pretty, I couldn't help myself. Beet sprouts. Basically, I want you to just grab whatever sprouts you can. I've chosen these four sprouts, but choose whatever you've got. Choose whatever you can find. You know, whatever you've got in the sprouter, whatever you can find at your store that's fresh. Make sure there's no odor, right? If you, if you sense a little bit something off when you smell it, don't eat it, right? If it's sticky to the touch, don't eat it. Right? It should, it should be light and dry. Um, and so these are beet sprouts, aphrodisiacs, and uh, exceptionally gorgeous. Like, what? what is this color? You know, dragon fruit maybe? Flowers? What food that we eat is this color? So magnificent. So we want to add that for inspiration, if nothing else. Very earthy flavor, right? Because it's made from beets. Um, and then the next ingredient, so here we've got this, I just want to make a, a note because we're building a salad basically out of sprouts. Uh -huh. So here we've got this and some of you might say, well, this is perfect, this is enough, and this is optimal, you just eat this. Well, I would assert that some of us need a little bit more excitement, 
I mean, it is pretty exciting as is. My goodness, this is like the most nutritious food on the planet. We should be so fortunate. But I want to add in a little bit of onion. I love that onion flavor. Chef Ken here, the head chef at Hippocrates, usually eats these, but definitely save these guys because these are essentially sprouts. Some people say you can replant them, right? But these, these are valuable, so you definitely don't want to throw them away. I'm not going to put them in my salad today, but definitely know that they are of value. But I do want to just chop these onions up nice and finely. I really love spring onions. I know it's not spring, or it's certainly not spring where I am. Maybe it is where you are. But I love spring onions. And I use them a lot in my recipes. And there's something that happens. There's like this gel that comes out when you cut them. And I feel like that gel has is, is made of polysaccharides and has beneficial properties for the connective tissue in my body. And it's just a beautiful thing to smell these onions freshly cut, just like you know, kind of spring, you know, when you smell those chives. This guy didn't work out so well. All right, so we're going to put these onions. This might be a little bit too much. I'm going to put this much in there. That's enough. So we're building our salad little by little, textures, flavors. And here we have a carrot. Carrot is our next ingredient. As you've seen in some of the other recipes that we've been reviewing, we use these carrots um, in a shredded form because I really like the texture and the sweetness it provides because the beetroot are very earthy and the broccoli are quite bitter. So now we want to round out the flavor with some of the shredded carrots, not only flavor but also texture. So I like to grate them. I'm going to grate them on the fine, but you could also grate them if you want to save time on the on the larger grate. So I'm just gonna come in here, apply you know, steady pressure, and get a nice amount of grated carrot. Takes a little bit longer to do the finer grate, but I think it's worth it. It creates a little bit of a creamy texture actually. One thing I love about this salad is that you don't necessarily need to have a dressing because there are going to be times where you've got the sprouts, they're going to go bad, you don't have a dressing made and you're rushed. What do you do? This is what you do. You see what you've got in the fridge and you make something great out of it. So always try to keep some carrots on hand because they certainly last longer than sprouts. I always try to have an avocado that's either ripe or ripening. You always keep some sauerkraut on hand. I'm giving you a little hint here about what's coming next. All right, so what do we have here? Beautiful, look at that. So we want a good amount of these, these shaved carrots. These are nice and fine, really beautiful. So we want to bring the salad bowl over and look at the colors. It's I got that bright orange and this what color. What would you call that color? It's like a pink. So beautiful. I just love, as you can see, taking the time to appreciate the bounty of nature, the glory of nature in this food. So our next ingredient is watermelon radish. Now, these look deceiving from the outside. It's kind of interesting, right? There's a little bit of a hue here and a little bit of green there, but I don't know. Before I knew about these, I never gave them the time of day. I might have saw them at the grocery store and I might have given them a glance, but I never really got serious about watermelon radishes until I did. Watermelon radishes, I mean, look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. It's like the, the capillaries in our bodies. Right, the, the, that which connects everything, maybe even the lymph. I'm not even sure, but it's so beautiful that I uh, have to, and sometimes they're brighter, sometimes they're dimmer. The one thing I love to do is uh, roast them, steam them, but what's exceptional is actually just putting them in a salad. And I like to slice them thinly because when you chunk them up, like if you were to cut this, you know, like a big chunk. Look at that, it's so beautiful. 
when you take a, it's okay, right? You can put this in a dip, you know, you can make little slices for a dip. That's also delicious. But what I really love is slicing them thinly in salads. And so I've got this fancy slicer here. And you can use, there we go. Oops, I've got the wrong side on here. That's actually kind of nice, but that's not what I'm looking for for this salad. So here we go. Sorry about that. Make sure this is in. Good. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Yes. First of all, look at this color. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's like a celebration right here. So you want these fine ribbons, right? You can even do this with a peeler if you don't have this, uh, this slicer. You can just have these nice ribbons. And this on its own is a dish, just with some olive oil drizzled over. Just beautiful, beautiful to serve. So we add this in. Another hue. So pretty. So a little bit more. So don't let any watermelon radish go to waste. This, like the like cabbage and some other vegetables, a little bit goes a long way. And it's a powerful, powerful food. Also containing sulfur. And you'll notice that, actually. Yeah, I can smell it. It's really spicy, actually. And each radish is going to be a little bit different. So I'm actually going to take a little bit out because I can smell already this is going to be a super spicy one. And in that case, too much bitter makes you kind of not finish your salad. <laughs> you start your salad like, oh, this is a little intense. And it's medicine. You know, everything, every ingredient we put into the salad is medicine. There's nothing in the salad that isn't profoundly life-giving and fundamentally rebuilding your cells so that when they continue to grow and keep growing, that they come back healed and better than ever. So another ingredient that I'm going to put in here is basil. Fresh herbs are a huge factor in my life and my salads especially because they add so much goodness. So this is some fresh basil right at the end of basil season here, but you can get fresh basil pretty much anywhere. Okay, so we're just gonna slice this up and put it in. I'm not gonna go too fine on the basil. I like to just kind of keep this in ribbons almost. So we wanna to bring this over and put this in. I like, to, I like kind of almost like lettuce, right? But this is a very special kind of lettuce because it's basil, it's an herb. All right, so here we go. And then uh, we have, I would say one of the things that make this salad so special is an avocado. So we have a ripe avocado here. So beautiful. And this is gonna be excellent for our skin. It's one of the stars in the Hippocrates diet, in the Hippocrates diet. And I'm just going to take the skin off. Super simple. I'm not even going to take a spoon to do it. You know why? Because I'm trying to save time. Fun, easy, and simple. These, this, is my, this is my mission. This is my commitment to you and to me because it can't be difficult. It's got to be fun. I'm just going to use the same knife and cut this avocado into the salad. And then we've got the avocado. So now this becomes the dressing. The avocado becomes the dressing. It's, it really works, believe it or not. I'm gonna add some sauerkraut. This is the kimchi made in the Hippocrates kitchen. It's delicious. And this becomes the dressing, the kraut and the avocado. I have one really special and very unique topping that I'm gonna add here. And that is the omega-3 fatty acids that I've only found here at Hippocrates, clary sage seed oil. And this is pure omega-3 fatty acid. Now we get a lot of omega-6 fatty acids in our diet from olive oil, olives, even hemp seeds. Hemp seeds have some omega-3, but we don't really get a lot of omega-3 fatty acids in our diet. 
And so the more omega-3 fatty acids we can get, the less inflammation we're going to have. So I'm going to have a generous portion here of omega-3 fatty acids. Now this does have a rather unique flavor, right? It's nutty, but you know, it's, it's, it's very similar to flax. Flax would be an excellent option if you don't have this special fancy clary sage seed oil. Uh, omega is a great option. Uh, sorry, flax seed is a great option. Hemp seed is a great option. Pumpkin seed would be a great option. So whatever you've got is going to be great and it's going to be enough. So try to keep it simple, easy, and fun. And you can have a fabulous salad every day no matter what. You just have to be sure that you have a few ingredients in your home. And to layer a salad like we did today in this recipe, we had our base as a sunflower seed sprouts. We added in some other sprouts that have stronger flavors, but extremely important medicinal properties. And then we added on some color and some flavor and some texture with our root vegetables that keep us grounded energetically, the carrot and the radish. And then we've topped it with the goodies, the basil, the avocado, and the kraut, creating a probiotic that helps to promote a healthier biome in our gut and uh, the spring onions to create that kind of that kind of flavor. Super simple, and I encourage you to do it. If you can't find all these sprouts, just use a box of greens that are organic that you find at your local store. And understand that by making a commitment to make these salads on a regular basis, you're investing your time and money in your health, your vitality, your longevity, and that's what we've been doing for over six decades at the Hippocrates Health Institute. You can completely restore your cellular health, your biological health, and decrease your aging, increase your vitality. I don't know who doesn't want that, but I want that for you. You don't even need to mix this salad. You literally just stick your spoon in and you take a bite. I like to get a little bit of avocado with my bite. Mmm. You've got the sweet, the creamy, the savory. It's so simple. The kimchi creates, creates that dimension, that acidity, that zing, clary sage seed oil. My goodness. If you don't have it again, you could use flax oil. That will work just as well. But it's so dynamic and it's so simple. It's so easy. I think it's fun. <laughs> and so you'll be receiving this and many, many more recipes, equally as simple, easy, and fun. And this one is basically no dressing, right? It's just the avocado and the kimchi. Could it be any more simple than that? I don't know. But uh, I hope that you enjoy this recipe. I'd love to hear from you about how you enjoyed this recipe. And I know that there'll be many, many more.